Hey, how's everybody doing? You guys doing okay? Welcome back to the Root BSD Technology Channel. Here at the Root BSD Technology Channel, we love free and open source software. We love OpenBSD, FreeBSD, NetBSD, Dragonfly BSD. We love GNU slash Linux. We love uh, what else is out there? We love Temple OS. That's God's holy operating system. We love Ninefront. You know that cute little Blenda, the bunny, Ninefront Unix. Uh, and uh, I am interested in, in playing around with some of that stuff. But today, we're in OpenBSD, and we're going to check out the Linus security auditing tool. The Linus tool will audit your system and tell you, hey, you might need to, you know, tweak this and that for security. So let's check it out. Let's see if we can, uh, how, we'll see what score we get. Um, but first off, I want to I want to uh, address some things. Um, the song you heard in the intro is our the friend of our channel, his name is Medicine DNB or Matt's Medicine. Really great guy. Check out his music. This is the song was called "Praying for You." Um, really fantastic uh, rave banger. I love. I really love it to death. So uh, definitely check out uh, Medicine on SoundCloud, and he's also on YouTube. Sorry, I got a little bit gas. He's on, on YouTube under uh, just look up Medicine DNB. And also, um, if, you, if you can't tell, I'm running a DWM. That's right. I've gone suckless. Well, man, I maybe not. Actually, to be perfectly honest, I'm just I'm I, I love rat poison so much that I, I just I st I can't even get into DWM honestly. I can't get into anything other than rat poison. I think there's just something wrong with me. I think you guys need to probably uh you know probably call the the guys in white boots and gloves to come take me to the padded room because I just I've I've just I'm in love of rat poison. But I'll I'll still use this stuff just for you guys just to just to help you guys out. I know you guys love this stuff. Well, anyways, if you go uh, over to this channel, this channel, this guy's his uh, channel is called the OpenBSD guy, and look at this base, uh, look at this base picture right here, right? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. The OpenBSD guy, he's really cool. He's got a really uh, awesome channel. But what I wanted to focus on is that not only does he have an awesome channel, he uh, he uh, kind of forked Luke Smith's um, DWM script, the LARBs thing. Uh, kind of just more basic, just just getting DWM up and working. I know some of you guys were asking me how do I get DWM up and working uh, in OpenBSC, but I'm not so much of a DWM guy. But this guy, he knows what he's doing, <laughs> and he wrote this fantastic script, and I was really impressed by this. And I tried this. Now, just a, just a fair warning: uh, this script uh, will overwrite your .x session. So if you got a custom .x session, uh, this script will overwrite it. And I didn't realize that I was a little irritated by it, but it's all good. I just had to, you know, rewrite my .x session, but it's okay. It's all right. No, I'm just kidding. You're awesome, Open, the OpenBSD guy. Uh, you know, uh, I'm going to always keep watching your videos. Uh, and then, um, uh, so yeah, this is what we're going to check out today. Uh, Linus is a security auditing tool f uh, for systems based on Unix, like Linux, Mac OS, BSD, and others. So it's it's very a, it's very a Unix Linux uh, kind of tool, but it'll work on Mac OS and it'll work on Linux and of course it works on BSD because that's why we're here today. Uh, it performs an in-depth security scan and runs the system that runs on the system itself. And you do have to run it as root, um, and uh, uh, you know you guys can go and read this stuff for yourself. I think it would be kind of dumb if I just you know read it out loud for you. But uh, check out uh, GitHub doc. You know I always you know what. I've been really just enjoying going on GitHub and GitLab and any kind of Git thing and just discovering projects. So uh, I definitely just recommend just just start checking out uh, people's repositories and their projects. But uh, this is uh, from a, a company called Sysify. It's called Linus, and they have open sourced this. It is um, under the GPL 3.0, so you're all good to go. We are open source. I know some people, they prefer the 2.0, but hey, GPL is GPL. You know, take it or leave it. Uh, also... Really quick, make sure you guys are checking for your patches, and or if you're um, uh, running current, just uh, make sure you get an update done pretty soon. We've had three security, or no, I'm sorry, two security fixes and a re reliability fix in the past week. So just want to give you guys a heads up about that. Also, if you uh, if anybody's interested in supporting OpenBSC. This is the official, it's called the OpenBSDStore.com. This is ran by an OpenBSD developer named Job. He does some of the artwork for OpenBSD. And the, all the, I believe all the money that 
from this store goes directly to the OpenBSD Foundation. So if you want to directly support OpenBSD, uh, you know, and, and get something cool out of it, they have posters. And uh, I'm I'm not a shill. They're not paying me anything. Uh, I just I just love. They just give me this free software that's really awesome. So I it's the best I what's the best I can do. But uh, yeah, check out uh, this cool artwork done by Job, and he has this cool. Uh, oh, it's sold out. Well, sometimes things come up, so you got to be quick. You know, uh, the T-shirts though are really good. Let's see here. Oh yeah. See, this is the one I really wanted. This one right, uh, this one right here. Um, well, not the women's comfort tee. I was looking more at. Uh, they used to have a hoodie with this design on it. I bet you it sold out. I, I, man, I messed up. Oh well, that's pretty cool. I like that. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, they still brought that design back. I like this hoodies. It's a little spendy, but I've bought in clothes from them before, and it's it's good clothes. I just don't recommend falling asleep in it because it's cotton and it'll it'll stretch out. So definitely just save it for, you know, nice days when you want to go out. Anyways, <clears throat> let's run Linus. So first we need to install Linus. I super secret password. Alright. Now let's figure out how to correctly use Linus by typing man Linus. Linus. System and Security Auditing Tool. Linus is a security auditing tool for the Linux, Mac OS, and other systems based on Unix. The tool checks the system and the software configuration. To see if there is any room for improvement the the, of, the ins of the security defenses. All, all details are stored in a log file. So let's just uh Let's look at what our flags are. Yeah, I told you this program kind of has to run as root. Uh, let's see here. So what we want to do is audit system. But this thing also has the ability to audit your system remotely, to audit a Docker file. Like I said, this this this, this uh, program can work with Linux, OpenBSD, FreeBSD, or any kind of BSD that you can get it to compile on, and Mac OS, any kind of Nix-like system. I'm pretty sure you could probably even port this to something like Solaris, uh, like uh, Open Indiana or something like that. Anyways, so we're gonna do do as. Linus audit system. All right, here we go. Let's we'll see. Let's we'll see what score we get. Let's see what. Let's see if we make the grade. All right, detecting OS. Also, uh, ten points if you can in the comment section uh, correctly identify this uh, wallpaper. We're almost there. I hope you guys have been having a good week. I know, uh, you know, talking to some people on the Fediverse, uh, you know, some people have been going through some tough times. I understand. It's been getting tough lately. I know for me, um, man, I want to invest in more, more, more hardware, but, uh, you see, I'm making more money, but the cost of living is going up so quickly around me that I'm kind of just, honestly, just making the same amount of money, no, no matter how many raises I get. <laughs> Like, each raise just kind of helps keep me from being in, you know, just total destitution. But anyways, so, here we go, uh, it is done. Let's see what grade we got. And I'm using Tmux to, uh, to scroll here. I love Tmux, I highly recommend it. Tmux is a native OpenBSD tool. It was first created by an OpenBSD developer. So, t yay Tmux. Let's see here. And I know a lot of you guys, you like your Viv Tmux workflow. I'm thinking. Of, I'm really thinking about looking at that. We gotta look for where. Where's our score? Oh, we got a seventy percent. Lame. You know, uh, that's like a C, right? Like a, a C plus. Well, that's actually a C minus. Ooh, you know what's going on right here, man? Uh, let's see. 
So uh, it gives you a list of exactly what's wrong. So let's go for this list. Suggestion. Warnings. Possible harmful harmful shell found for a passwordless account. Now I think this is misinterpreting something that's native to OpenBSD. I think it's talking about it might be just talking about um, how I'm using the um, you can find it in the etc login.com. I think it explains it right here. Yeah it does. Okay. Alright, this is where this is where I got this from. Staff have fewer restrictions and can log in even where no logins are set. So I'm wondering, I've always wondered if that's what that, that warning comes from. Um, we'll see. Oh, and by the way, for my uh, my Distro 2 guys, yes, I did alias Vim to be VI. I've been forcing myself to use VI. Just want to let you guys know that. You know, it's not always easy, but you know what? I've noticed the more I force myself to use it, the more comfortable I get with it. So you can, that applies to a lot of things in life, guys. Sometimes just force yourself to do something that you're uncomfortable with, and you'll you'll realize how quickly you can adapt. It's in, it's strange. It's interesting. It's an interesting thing about our our minds and our brains. So let's see here. Uh, control B, one. No. Control B zero. Yes. Okay. Um, add boot to the etc. Boot .com file to disable the five second waiting time. Okay. Install a PAM module. I think this is like a Linux specific thing. OpenBSD is using something called the Blowfish encryption standard and they're using some other things. From what I understand is if you, as long as you have a, a strong password that's like over seven or eight characters, the the um, Blowfish encryption standard is designed for someone would just have to just bang on that with a password cracker for like a thousand years just to, to even get close. I don't know, that's how it was explained to me. I could be wrong. If somebody thinks I'm wrong, Comment in the comment section. You know, I I, don't, I never claim to be an expert on anything. You know, well, only maybe uh, there's a couple of things that I am, but they have they have nothing to do with computers. Um, who mask and etc. Okay, so <clears throat> this one is kind of sketchy to me because I've heard some people say that that this can cause problems setting your who mask to 27. Now, I had that in a previous system of mine, but that previous system kind of broke mysteriously, and I was always wondering if it had something to do with this Umask. But, you know, I logged in as another, I created a user, and I logged in, and uh, with a regular 22 Umask, uh, or Umask, everything was fine, or every, I mean, the same problem was still occurring, the same problem was repeating. So I don't think there's anything wrong with setting your Umask to 27, uh, unless maybe... Maybe in a production server environment, you might want to be careful. It could mess with some third-party applications, but I'm not sure. I'm going to look more into that one. But, uh, let's see. Install a package audit tool to, to determine vulnerable packages. Uh, our... I think our package, ma package maintainers in OpenBSD are pretty pretty clever guys. And uh, If there's anything that is just fishy or just... They, they remove packages all the time. One thing you can count on about the OpenBSD project is they're good about removing code <laughs> and removing packages. So at some point you feel like, well, is this project shrinking or what? But no, they're not. They're not shrinking, but they do keep things lean. They do love to trim the fat. Let's see. Just consider hardening SSH configuration. Now, what I want to also talk about is it gives you these codes right here. So if we, if we look up... So what it's saying is that it wants me to not allow TCP forwarding. So if you look at this code, and we go to, um, let's start a new tab here, uh, Linus Security Audit, there we go. So that's how you look up these codes with Linus. Proper hardening of your SSH configuration can reduce known weaknesses. Yes, absolutely. Don't run SSH. Don't allow SSH root logins and use pub keys. They are safer. And this will give you some stuff like don't allow TCP forwarding and stuff like that. And um, I know a lot of you Windows Server guys use a lot of like remote desktop things like VNC and and um, you know I've always just wondered about GUI over over the network. I mean, even GUI through, I mean, I mean, you would have to pipe that GUI through SSH. If you can pipe the GUI through, I know there's X11 forwarding. I've always been curious about it, though, whether or not 
it's kind of a safe practice. I, I, I feel like most of the guys that are doing security, they're doing SSH, you're doing everything over the command line. But, I don't know. I, I'm still I'm still learning, just like you guys. It's just sometimes, you know what, always be, never, don't always be so trusting. Always be suspicious of things. You know, always, you know, kick, as we say in America, you know, kick the tires of, of the car. And that's just a saying for somebody that goes to a used car salesman, there's something called a lemon where they might sell you something kind of suspicious. So you want to kick the tires, you want to check things out, you know? Uh, and some of you might say, oh, see, this proves OBSD is not that secure. Well, some of this stuff kind of just really is more Linux-specific stuff. It, there's reasons why it wouldn't apply, or it would it would trip uh, 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 trip something on here. But definitely I can, I can harden my SSH configuration. Uh, I'm pretty sure... Uh, let's see here, control BC. Um... Um, what you want to go is in, in OpenBSC, almost all your system configuration files are going to be in, in uh, etc. Anything OpenBSC specific that's not like third party program specific is going to be in this folder right here. Everything, it's really simple. So let's do uh, SSH. So you got the SSH daemon config and then just the SSH config itself. So let's look at the SSH config. And I'm running this, uh, just, I'm not running this with, with the privileges, so I'm running this with, uh, what's it called? Um, read only. This is read only right now. So this is the file I'm talking about, and you can change some of these things based on, um, based on what this is suggesting. Like, set your log level to from info to rubos. Set your compression from yes to no. Count to live max from three to two. So it's pretty simple stuff. You can go through and you can harden your system. Um, I'm not going to do this because I mean it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean I could do this in my free time. I don't have to do this on video for you guys. Just you know switching each of these over. But you can see how this uh, gave me uh, uh, a score of 70. So next time I make a video, I'll just quickly jump into this after I make all these changes, and I'll tell you how my score is improved. I think the best you can do on OpenBSD with this program is 83, and I think a lot of the other things that it's complaining about just don't apply to OpenBSD. So I'll, overall, when we get to an 83, that'll be a B-, and we're doing pretty good for security, honestly. Uh, and there's other things that just, the Linus is probably not even taking into account, OpenBSD's built-in kernel hardening and security technologies and stuff like, like that. Uh, real quick, uh, let's finish this video up uh, with some other things. Uh, oh, for one thing, uh, I just want to go over. I've been I've been checking out your guys' comments. I've been checking out. Uh, I, I'm always receptive to anything anybody says about anything that I do online, and um, that's positive. You know, I mean, I don't I don't listen to trolls for the most part. Uh, so I compiled a list of things that. Uh, oh, this is Featherpad, by the way, uh, guys. This is the uh, OpenBSD equivalent of uh, Windows Notepad. There you go. Uh, complaints about the channel. Uh, number one, episodes are too long, and I and I realize this, and I've been working hard to try to uh, not only to make episodes shorter, but I've also been trying to get better at my editing in Caden Live. So definitely, I hear I'm hearing you. Episodes are too long. I'm gonna try to keep their length to around 15 to 20 minutes, unless unless. I'm just, I'm just, I'm on a good one, and I'm just pouring out knowledge, and I'm not, I'm not gonna all release a long video, I'm sorry. If I release a long video, it's because there's a lot of meat in there, a lot of meat and potatoes, okay? Intro is too long. Yes, I understand, there's, a, I'm, I, I'm, the last intro I did was like, was 30 seconds, exactly. I won't ever do an intro over 30 seconds, but I understand for some people, 30 seconds might be a little too long, so I'll try to keep my intros at like, from 15 to 20 seconds. I mean, just depending on how banging the music is, okay? And uh, also, with the music thing, Music is a big thing to me because I'm also really getting into uh, free and open source uh, music production using Linux tools, okay? And, and that's going to be a part of my channel. But it's a work in progress, and I don't even want to really get into that right now. Um, if you guys follow me on Mastodon, you probably can learn more about that. But uh, uh, definitely that's something in the future. Uh, your microphone sucks. Yes, my microphone is actually a Pine phone. It's a free and open source hardware uh, cell phone that's running on an ARM computer, and I'm using the KDE Plasma Mobile recorder app. So, I'm, um, it's the best I got. Uh, like I said, I'm getting into um, uh, audio production, high-end audio production, so I'm gonna start investing in microphones. So don't worry, it's, it's coming. Like, but like, also, like I said, the cost of living where I live is just skyrocketing, and I got kids, 
you know, and it's 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 just tough right now. So I it's I'm not I'm not some of these guys, you know, they, they got a lot of extra income because they're just in a good situation, they don't got a lot of bills, and they can just blow it on whatever. And the kudos to those guys, you know. I wish there was times in my life where that was a thing, but I wasn't I didn't know about all this this cool computer stuff that I could do. So you know, you live and you learn. Well we're getting there. And your equipment sucks. Actually, my equipment may suck, but um, there is a fellow uh, content creator here. If we go to um, Odyssey.com, and we look up at. Oh, come on. Odyssey, by the way, is the slowest website in the universe. <laughs> At um, Retro Edge Tech, this is um, he sent me some new hardware for OpenBSD, and there he is, Retro Edge Tech. Uh, here he is compiling Chicken Scheme. The guy, he's a brilliant programmer, brilliant computer repair uh, guy. Uh, definitely watch him. He's super smart. Uh, check him out on Odyssey. He sent me some hardware, so we're gonna do an unboxing video of this hardware, and then we're gonna install OpenBSD on it. It's an op gonna be an OpenBSD desktop install on desktop, real hardware, bare, bare metal. Uh, I'm doing that this, on my weekends here. We're gonna do that, um, and uh, yes, I am definitely listening to get your guys' complaints, and I'm working on it. And this is gonna be a, a top-notch OpenBSD YouTuber channel. Okay, it's gonna be. Just as good as all the other guys. <laughs> Alright. Well, that wraps it up. You guys have a great day. Peace. Bye.